So today I want to talk about documentary camera rigs and what we're currently shooting. Uh, one caveat is all these cameras may change in the next six months to a year just as fast as equipment's coming out, but this is what's currently working for us. My hope is that you'll get some ideas on what we're using and what's working. Uh, it'll cut down on your research time. Secondly, is that I want to talk over kind of how we decided to purchase what we did. And maybe there's some principles in there that'll help you when you're buying new equipment or upgrading uh, for your next project. So let's get into it. So as a documentary filmmaker, the cameras I'm looking for typically have to do more than one thing. If you're a cinematographer on narrative films, you want the best picture. And if you work in uh, music videos, you might have a certain look or feel or slow motion. What I'm typically looking for is the camera that does a lot of things really well. So what we found is the Canon C300 Mark II is what we're currently using. These are two identical cameras. This is our Cine rig. I love shooting this rig when I use an easy rig or something like that. But this camera also weighs a ton. For a run and gun rig, sometimes it's really difficult to manage that rig. This is, this is the same camera, but this is stripped down as a uh, kind of a run and gun rig. You know, we changed up the top handle. This screen is a touch screen, but this has autofocus. But this is kind of typically what uh, we take on every shoot is these two rigs. Now you're probably wondering why we have two C200s or C300s. I used to buy one really nice camera and then I would get a B unit camera. And instead what we're doing now is just buying two of the exact same cameras. Everything matches, all the batteries match, all the media matches, everything just simplifies down. I can buy these two cameras for the price of one camera that's out now. Yes, that camera does some things that um, I'd love these cameras to do, but what I found is I can probably get away 99% of the time with these cameras for what those ones actually offer. So at some point we'll probably upgrade to those cameras, but right now we kind of look at it as I want to buy the camera that I can afford for whatever price I have and get two of them. Now that's how we work. I'm not saying that that's how you did. That's how everybody should work. Uh, the other thing is interviews, is having two cameras and two tripods, it is so easy to be able to uh, set up and move fast when you're not worried about, are these gonna match, are the colors there, what's the frame rate, everything is just synced up from the start of the film. Now the one thing that isn't on these that um, I'll show you on the third rig that we're using a lot of is this is the Canon uh, Mark IV 5D, and this is just a little cine rig. The reason that we take this is if I need to be in the back of an airplane, or I just want a quick rig that takes the same style of lenses, uh, this is a great rig for that. Second is it's 4K and it's full frame. So if I need a wider shot, this provides me that option. And then there's this. This is a 1080 camera. It's the Canon G5X. And it's just a little camera that I take everywhere. I have done so many um, B-roll shots with this that I can cut even between 4K and slip this in and you probably wouldn't notice it. Some cinematographers obviously would, but this camera has been a lifesaver. Um, I needed some shots of the stadium where the US Open is uh, played. It was under construction. I knew if I showed up with one of these, I wasn't gonna get in, but I, basically snuck up into the construction office and said, hey, I just need to go in and take a couple shots. And we talked for a little bit. And one guy put me on a golf cart and took me inside the stadium. And he said, look, if you get caught, uh, you never met me. And he dumped me off. I was able to use this and uh, this Joby thing. I was at B&H in New York and I was looking for a tripod. And the guy behind the counter said, just get a Joby and Use it like this, the camera's not heavy enough, but it'll stabilize you. And I actually shot everything on this thing. And then I was always reluctant to buy one of these things, but it's been, um, it go, kind of goes with me everywhere now. So a lot of times people ask me why we put tape over a lot of the branding on our cameras. It's that, you can kind of see it there. Uh, what we found is that in international countries, you know, these big brands like Canon and Sony, they just attract attention. So anytime we can just downplay that, 
it's helpful. So I wanted to end this with three or four principles that we've learned in buying new equipment. The first is it's really time consuming and takes away from my creativity when I'm researching and researching just because something's new. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm a gear junkie. You put me in a room with a bunch of camera guys and, and tech guys, I love talking about gear. However, it does take away from the creativity if I'm not solely focused on being a storyteller. You know, I'm learning that uh, the camera gear just allows me to tell a better story in a more professional way. But recently, when I was prepping for this, I found this old camera case and I found this camera. And it was the first camera I ever bought. And I bought it for $429 off of eBay 20 years ago. And I shot hundreds and hundreds of hours of DV tapes on this. The buttons on the top have come off because we taped it to a ceiling for a, for a shoot. The front of it fell off and I had to gaff tape the, the front of the camera on. But it just reminded me that when I sometimes had equipment limitations, what it forced is a lot of creativity and it allowed me to become a storyteller. And by not having money and not having all this equipment really just forced me to tell good stories. And, uh, you know, little cameras like this, I learned simply that if you have more light, they actually look pretty good. And back 20 years ago, I spent $2,500 on a light kit instead of upgrading my camera. And people couldn't figure out why my stuff looked good. It's because I was just banging a ton of light into stuff that allowed the camera to perform. So I wanna end with this. There's three principles that we've kind of come up with when we're upgrading gear. The first one is, does it solve a technical or creative problem that I have to get a project completed? You know, this 5D was actually purchased when we were going to India, as I mentioned before. I didn't want to get caught at the border and have my cameras taken or something like that, having to deal with it. So the first one is, does it solve a creative or technical problem I have to accomplish the, the project? The second thing, is what are the requirements for distribution? If I need a camera that, uh, if we have a project, if one of our documentary films is gonna be brought into the market, uh, does the camera actually shoot something or am I gonna get hosed at the end because somebody can't um, buy it because it's not shot in the right codex? And then the third one, is it just fun? Does it spark my creativity? Hope this was helpful. If you have any comments or wanna post any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. Have a great day.